Well, look at this. The Junghans mega clocks have already set themselves to the right time. As soon as they interpreted the data right, they spun around to the right time. So those are done for now. Let's see. And here's the atomics clock. It's, uh, it has interpreted the data, and now it's doing its own thing, uh, running around at a little bit faster than normal speed until it's going to finally find its way and be set to the proper time here. In about 10 minutes, it will have caught up to the right time. Uh, my dog's entertaining you, I hope. Ah, okay, buddy. All right, so, and then finally, I, I love this one. Uh, this was available at Sam's Club for a little while. Uh, it's been a couple of years ago since uh, I saw one of these at Sam's Club. And I think you can still get them online elsewhere. But when I got it at Sam's Club, uh, the price was particularly uh, intriguing there. I just I couldn't resist. So I got this and I got a couple others just for, for fun. And so this one is set to roll on the mountain time zone already. And I'll just set that out there and see how it goes. And so let's check up on Hoax. So the cross technologies, that's done. The Yungans mega clocks have already done their thing. This other uh, atomics clock is coming around, and it'll be on the right time in about three more revolutions, so maybe it'd be fun to watch that. Um, here, this one has already set itself, and let's see about the sky scan clock. This one has already set itself to the right time. This uh, Seiko clock is already on the right time. Uh, this one here is still trying. It's only been at it for about three minutes, so it's not quite there yet. Uh, how did this guy do? Okay, this one's up and uh, at the right time now. This one uh, has gone to the right time. This one here is still working at it. Uh, it's been going for, these two have been going for about the same amount of time. This guy here is still working at it. And oh look, this one is now ticking away. And it's kind of fun, you know, to watch these clocks and see them ticking. And you know, the second hands are just, you know, synchronized with each other. And that's, boy, that's good fun for a, for a guy who likes gadgets to watch second hands ticking away. In, in synchronicity with each other. Okay, still working, still working. This guy, yeah, that one's done. How about this guy, how do we do here? Okay, still working, it's only been going for a couple minutes. The data that these clocks receive from the WWVB transmitter, uh, it, it may take two or three minutes, even if it's getting super good clear reception, it might take two or three minutes to interpret the full data string that it's getting. Also, you know, maybe when I put the clock in, the, the data that it was receiving was kind of right in the middle of a message. So it has to wait to the, to the end of that message and then start listening to the, the start of the new message and see what time it is. And uh, maybe, I think some of these maybe even uh, receive the message twice and then kind of double check it before they go ahead and set themselves. Like, let's see, okay, so that one's done. This one's still working at it, okay. This one's done. This one here, the Skyscan clock, is done. So the only two we're waiting on now is this original Oregon Scientific Time Machine with an external antenna, because back when they built this guy, the uh, radio signal coming from Colorado was not as strong as it is today, so they had an external antenna. So you could sort of orient this near a window or somewhere away from your alarm clock. And uh, how are we doing here on the giant sky scan? Oh, it's done. Okay, so the only one we're waiting on now <laughs> is the original Oregon scientific clock. The rest of these, they've all set themselves. Some of them are set to uh, the, the, like the specific time zone because I didn't, because uh, I just let it go to the default setting. But other than that, you know, it's, a, it's just a quick thing to, to adjust there. I wonder if I should let this video end but just wait for this guy to set itself. Dogs are comedy machines. I'll just say that much. I won't even describe that for you. All right, so I know this clock works. So if it doesn't work right here on camera, it's just camera shy. But it's a wonderful clock. I've had this since 1996, I think it was, when I bought it. Paid $100 for it because, well, that's just how much they cost 
back then. It was new technology. Oh, here's one, okay. This one is still going around, and it's going to take a little while. It takes about four minutes for it to go around one hour's worth. And so right now it's still about six hours behind where it wants to be in order to set itself to, to show the current time in this time zone. And so that's going to take about 25 minutes or, or thereabouts before it settles down and just starts ticking away like a regular clock. Um, I've got a wide variety of these clocks. I love them. I like the different styles and sizes and the brands and the way they function and the way they look. And so that's uh, just a little view of my collection. And I hope you will join me for the Atomic Timekeeping podcast, which, like I said, is normally an audio-only podcast. And you can find it at atomicelmer.blogspot.com. Atomicelmer.blogspot.com. That's the official blog, and that's there's a feed associated that, with that, so you can automatically, um, you know, subscribe in iTunes, and the feed will tell you what's. If you, in fact, I think it's it's uh, over here. If you go to my blog and you sort of look over that side of the screen, there's a there's a subscribe in iTunes link. It's free. It's easy. It's just a couple of clicks away. And if you got iTunes on your computer, then you'll listen to every new episode of the Atomic Timekeeping podcast. Well, thanks for spending a few minutes with me here right now and uh, hope to see you on the podcast.